Welcome to my YouTube channel, Rick Sirwitz Watercolor. At any time during this video, you can click the link in the bottom right hand corner and subscribe to my channel. This is the narrated step by step tutorial for my painting, Primary Floral. The photograph on the right was a reference from my painting, and on the left is my interpretation of that subject. So it's less of an attempt to be a historical record of that photograph. I'm not trying to copy the photograph. My interpretation is more a subtle, uh, expressive interpretation of the photograph and the subject. I could have spent hours trying to render out each subtle shadow depicted in the photograph, but I wanted to be more expressive with my painting and have more expressive brush strokes. This is a sketch that I drew with a bead pencil on a sheet of 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. It's a quarter sheet, 11 inches by 15 inches. And I've drawn the major shapes and then broken down some of the elements within those shapes. I decided in this painting that I was just going to work with the primary colors. So the colors that I used were Hansa Yellow Light, Cobalt Blue, and Rose Matter Quinacridone. I'll show you the colors that I'll be working with before I begin the painting. So here is my Hansa Yellow Light. I like to mix big pools of color. This is Rose Matter Quinacridone. I often get asked about the uh, Rose Matter Quinacridone compared to the Rose Matter Genuine. And one of the big differences is that the Rose Matter Genuine tends to be made with natural pigments and is very fugitive so it, it's not that light fast and the series of quinacridone colors are much more uh, light fast so I've also added the cobalt blue and these are the three primary colors that I'm going to be working with and you can see by mixing these in various ratios I can get some very neutral colors as well as some brighter tones I'm going to begin by wetting my paper. So I'm going to begin this painting working wet and wet. And uh, I'm not going to cover the entire paper. I'm, I'm leaving some areas where there's some breaks um, because I, I'm going to control where the moisture's at so that I maintain some of the pure white of the paper. So I'm, I'm being very liberal as I apply this. Uh, water to wet the paper. Some areas are quite large and I'm covering entire sections and other areas I'm intentionally leaving spaces in between my brush strokes which are somewhat erratic in some areas just so that I can maintain some some uh, some of the white of the paper. And while it seems random it's intentional that some areas I've covered completely and other areas I haven't. So my paper is saturated and I'm working at about 20 degree angle as I often do. And now I'm taking some of my mixture from my palette that has some hands of yellow and a little bit of uh, rose matter quinacridone in it. And I'm just hitting some of the areas where the centers of these flowers are and there's a bit of a yellow gold tone in the center of these. And then I just want to put a few touches of that color in some areas to suggest there's some flowers there. Here I'm taking a mixture that has a bit more uh, rose matter quinacridone in it and a little touch of cobalt blue. And you can see how the these uh, colors merge together very nicely on the edges it creates a variegated wash because of the, the manner I'm applying it and I'm working wet on wet so it's a combination of wash techniques I'll be using and here some of this is a variegated wash and some of it 
uh, is just a gradation from one end to the other. And, and there is some mixing going on on the paper and in some areas where it's just the edges will, will mix. I'm using a, a, a round wash brush. It's, jump, it's a size jumbo round small, it's called. It's a very soft brush. It's a squirrel synthetic blend. You can see the uh, moisture gathered at the bottom of my page. That's because I'm working at an incline and eventually that that moisture flows towards the bottom edge of my paper. It will only flow though where my paper is wet. Uh, the dry paper will resist the flow of the, the moisture. If you've watched my videos or attended my workshops, you've probably heard me comment on what I call the personality of watercolor. And it's these early stages where that evolves. Working wet and wet, I'm able to create a lot of these soft transitions. Uh, it, it's transitioning from yellow to orange to blue, from warm colors to cool colors. And I'm getting a, a variety of uh, edges here, but a lot of softness. And I'll come in occasionally and I'll blot out some areas with a tissue if I want to lighten an area up before it dries. So right now my paper is still saturated and I can come in and introduce some colors without getting backwash. And that uh, working at an angle helps move that paint and, and even things out as I uh, touch it with a tissue or bring in my brush with some additional paint. So if you look at this first stage, we're able to achieve some variation, as I said, in color temperature, um, but also intensity. There's some colors a little brighter than others. There's some areas that are moving more towards neutral. And um, this has all been done with these three colors, cobalt blue, hands of yellow light, and rose matter quinacridone. Now I'm coming in with a little stronger uh, tone as kind of a almost an earthy orange. And right now I really haven't done a lot with value. It's still pretty much very light value. And these areas I'm putting in now seem a little darker, but really they, they dry still would dry pretty light. So now I'm going to take a tissue, I'm going to blot some of these areas to create some texture and some patterns. They're going to be very soft textures and my Kleenex is crumpled up and my paint's right on the edge of moving from uh, saturated to damp, I'm starting to lose some of the gloss, but it's still enough that I can pick, it, pick up some of the paint and it doesn't flow right back in because it's not completely saturated right now, but it's not really damp yet, it's, it's in a transitional state. This initial stage is, is the foundation for my painting and, and because it's evolved over the whole composition it's going to provide some unity as this painting develops. I want to point out again that this is being done with three colors. I recently published an online course on mixing paint and one of the exercises is creating a color wheel using these three colors. This is that color wheel, and all the colors in this color wheel were created using those three colors. Hands of yellow light, cobalt blue, and rose matter quinacridone. So using those three colors, you can create the entire color wheel, and then also you can shift the intensity and create quite a few neutral colors, and that's what was done in this exercise. Now I have this foundation I can build upon as I darken my values, strengthen my edges, and get more refined with my shapes. My paper is thoroughly dried now and I start to enter into a point in my process where I really focus on edge development. I start to contrast hard edges against soft edges. And by defining edges, I in turn start to define shapes. And it's not just about contrasting edges. It's about contrasting large shapes against smaller shapes, warm colors against cool colors, light values against dark values. 
I'll also start to explore positive and negative relationships. Here I'm working around the exterior edge of some of these larger shapes. I refer to that exterior edge as the negative edge and I start to gradate that wash off into a negative space. I'm working with a size 4 round sable and a, a very fluid mixture which has a lot of water in it. I'm still in a, in a very light value range but I'm starting to uh, get a little darker starting to create edges with these shifts in value and I'm working wet on dry I'm creating uh, gradated washes right now so I, I apply my my paint along that edge and then I soften it moving away using clear water so this is a uh, process that takes a little while to build up Here I'm continuing developing edges and uh, I'm still using gradated washes as I move further in my process I'll start to use some flat washes in areas but you can start to see by the, creating these edges and developing the edges uh, I'm starting to uh, define some of the shapes in particular the larger shapes so even though I haven't painted on those those larger shapes that are flowers uh, you can start to see them because I'm uh, placing washes on the exterior edges and start to develop those edges which start to define the shapes here I'm working on defining the edge in the lower right hand corner and softening that and you can see that I'm using some uh, violet, some red violet, and um, it's a bit of a, a more of towards violet, blue violet dominance. And as this painting evolves, I'll try to to shift the the color temperature either more towards the warm or more towards the cool, so that I have a. a a temperature dominance and um, this do the same thing with values I'll have uh, a dominance between light dark medium uh, or middle values I've thoroughly dried my paper once again I reached a point where I had worked all over the page and it was really in a damp condition if I continued to try and do some brushwork in those areas there's a good chance I would have had some blossoms and backwashes. So I dried my paper and now I'm going to continue on. Still uh, strengthening edges, but as I go I start to work on defining smaller shapes and I start to get a little darker with my values. And while I'm going darker, they're still not very dark, they're very much middle value one of the things about this painting is I'll be able to get fairly dark with it but because I'm only using the three colors cobalt blue uh, rosemary quinacrine and, and hands yellow I'll only be able to get as dark as the the pigments will allow me uh, the pigments coming out of the tube will allow me unless I were to mix a darker value uh, pigment in there often I use royal blue to really get a dark value but in this painting I'm intentionally just using these three colors and I'll be able to create a strong enough value dominance because I'm going to place uh, some of my darkest darks besides those uh, the white of the paper I'll get the, the, the nice contrast but I'm not going to go all the way down on the value scale as far as I normally would I'm going to continue to develop these edges. This is a gradual process of patiently building up layers. I'm going to strengthen the edges here a little bit and I'm going just a shade darker with my value. 
hopefully as you look uh, across the composition right now you can see a variety of of colors emerging although uh, they're staying in the in the neutral area neutral tones you can see hints of some some yellows some oranges some reds some some red violets violets and probably not a lot of uh, true blue but there will be just subtle hints of some of the blue blue grays as this develops here I'm going to come in with some red orange and really starting to sharpen up some edges I'm going to take some uh, red violet and bring that in. You can see hopefully how I, I, I started with the, the red orange and it's very wet in the area where I applied that and then I just loaded my brush with a red violet and continued that wash so those colors just merge and carry on but it gives uh, a nice variation of color within one wash. It, it's much more interesting than when you just use one flat color all the time and you charge it with, with multiple colors. Now I'm going to paint the center of these flowers a little bit using a, a mixture that's leaning heavily towards yellow. And once I get that area covered, I'm going to take a, a little, little darker mixture here and just charge that wash by touching the edge of it. Some, some call it kissing the edge but um, it provides nice gradation so it's, it's almost like a, a gradated wash in a very small area I'm carrying that to some of these other flowers and softening that wash a little bit with a spray bottle just diffusing the wash that I put down Now I want to tone down part of this larger flower shape and I want to push some of it back so that I can give a little bit more dimension to it and it doesn't look as flat. So that's moving away in space. So I'm putting a wash over that and then using this spray to diffuse that, that tone, that value. But I'm going to come back in with a little bit more here and go go uh, a little farther with this wa with this wash when I'm working at, at this point in my process I'm really not that concerned with details I'm still trying to see shapes shapes of value areas of color and um, I'm, I'm not worried about trying to paint between lines right now. I'm looking at the overall composition. There's areas where I'm trying to maintain the white of the paper. And there's other areas where I, I'm trying to uh, tone it down and, and push things back or bring something forward. The top left corner right now is all a light to light middle value. There's, no, there's very little pure white of the paper there, maybe a little showing through but that's so uh, I can differentiate that that area in space from areas that are, are closer to us if everything looks the same throughout the whole composition it looks very flat and you really you lose your perception of depth place the reference photo in the top right corner when I look at the reference photo I'm not as concerned with looking at details. I'm just looking at major shapes, areas of value and color, and thinking about where I want the light source to hit. Right now I want to provide a little separation between these two large floral shapes here. I'll soften that with my spray bottle. 
that's not as flat between the two, the transition between the two flowers there. Now I'm going to start doing some smaller brushwork. I'm working with a darker value. I'm starting to work with smaller shapes, some hard edges. And this is really the first kind of calligraphic marks that I've uh, made in the painting. But you can see that this is a darker value than what I've been using. And this is a mixture that's leaning towards a, uh, a, a red, a dark red orange, leaning more towards neutral. Now as I put this in, the areas where I've placed this are very wet. They're just small shapes. And I'm going to soften those uh, edges a little bit on those. So here I'll take some clear water and soften the edges just a bit. I like to blot frequently sometimes with a tissue. Come back with a little more color. I'm going to spray it with my bottle and let it diffuse some of that color a little bit and let it run. And I can touch my brush into this. So I started wet on dry, then I started to add some more water, then I sprayed it. And once I sprayed it, that area is wet. And when I come back in, I'm working wet on wet. Now I'm moving over to this other flower. And this mixture that I'm using has a little bit more uh, blue in it. So it's, it's a cooler uh, tone. It's still a very earthy color, but it, like I said, it leans a little bit more towards uh, blue. has some yellow and blue in there that uh, are, are uh, a bigger part of the ratio than the red. And it leans it towards a, a yellowish green, kind of an earthy tone. I'm going to use a little bit more of that over in this area. Now I'm going to come in with some uh, darker valued warm tones. Here I'm going back to a uh, it's almost a, almost a uh, a dark neutral red orange and I'm going to strengthen the edge on that shape and then diffuse that so that that runs a little bit and softens the edge. Throughout this painting I'm trying not to get too hard edge, too hard shape. I want it to be uh, dominantly soft So here, just by going off the outer edge, the exterior edge of some of these petals of the flower, and then spraying away from it, I can help strengthen that edge, but soften uh, that shape going away so it still has a soft touch. Now I'm going to come back up in this area up top with this kind of a dark red-orange using a, my wash brush. So I make some, some large uh, brush strokes. And here again you can see that I'm trying to strengthen the edge. And now I'm working on a little bit of the cooler mixture. I'll take some water and soften that. So that warm and cool run together. And it's only going to go where I take my brush and lead it. And some of these shapes I want to glaze over. So really there's three ways that I normally soften edges. I either use my brush with water in it, I'll come in and I'll blot it with a tissue, or I'll use a spray bottle and I'll soften the edge.
Now I'm going to come back in with a similar tone here, this kind of a, a, a red-orange. It's a little brighter than the mixture I used to the right. And the I'm glazing over, uh, the layer of paint that I'm glazing over is leaning more towards the red, uh, light red-violet than to the right where I put that wash and it was more of a, a gold tone. So the, the resulting effect is a little different even though the, the, the glaze was very similar. Now I'm really pushing back that area on the left of the, the flower there. And you can see that I'm not being uh, uh, real ticky tacky or, or fiddling around with my brush. I just make big brush strokes and then I move on. And there I softened with a, a fine mist spray and then blotted it with a tissue. This type of brush, it, it, it holds a lot of, of volume uh, of moisture, um, but it, and it's very soft, but it, it tends to, to shape in many ways. You can get it so it has a very kind of flatness to it, or uh, you can use the full uh, body of the brush and get a nice wide stroke. It's it's uh, pretty versatile. Now I'm coming back on the, another flower here towards the lower right. And you can see this is a cooler mixture. It's, it's violet but it's uh, uh, very far in uh, towards the neutral pole. And there's a little bit of, of violet, red violet there, but it's uh, a darker value and quite neutral. Now I'm going to step down my value again. This is staying with a kind of a neutral violet. And I want to start to go deeper into the background here with some of the washes that I'm putting down. So I want to push some of these areas back and they're going to start to look a little more like definitive shapes while I'm still going to try and keep them soft. As I move across, I'm going to shift to more of a red violet. So when you're applying a wash like this, as I've said a, a number of times, it's much more interesting when you can uh, have some shifting of the hue or the chroma so that you have a, a wash that has a, a, a color that's moving from neutral to, to more intense or from one hue to another and they're, these are close on the color wheel so they're going to be harmonious uh, they're going to relate well together and work well together but it, it provides a lot more interest to your wash now I'm going to come in with some more brush work and these are going to be more color graphic marks and I'm not really going to uh, diffuse them too much. I need to have some uh, definitive edges in, in some areas in this composition. It can't all be uh, just kind of soft and cottony. So I'll work my way around my composition adding a few touches of some of these brush marks. When I reach this point in my painting process, I don't really use the reference photo a whole lot. I tend to let myself be guided by design principles and I add touches of value or sharpen edges and make shapes where I feel they would provide the most interest. And here I'm just doing some brushwork to add some touches of dark value here and suggest some shapes.
I'm going to do some more of the brushwork down here with a, a change in color. This area I've been keeping more towards the, uh, the violet with some touches of red violet in it and a little bit of blue violet, but uh, very neutral. And I, I like to develop my painting as a whole. I, prov I feel that it, it helps bring balance and harmony and unifies the whole composition. I tend not to just go paint one area and then move on. If I'm uh, painting a structure or a still life or something, I don't uh, just pick out a door and paint it till completion and then go move to the car. And then there's nothing wrong with that approach. It's just not the approach I like to take. I like to develop my painting as one whole composition and just let it evolve. The brushwork that I'm doing now is into a light middle value but I'm trying to paint some harder edge shapes into this area of the flower so it has a little bit more form to it the petals are a little more definitive but I'm still trying to keep it high key I don't want it to get real dark uh, with it with the brushwork I'm doing at the moment so I'm using a mixture that is uh, a very neutral uh, almost a gray, almost a neutral gray, not quite. It tends to lean a little bit towards the red violet in some areas and a little more towards the blue violet in other. Here I'm putting a, a wash of this cooler uh, light middle value gray over a larger shape here. Sometimes somebody will ask how many layers you've put down, and I, you know, when I look at a painting like this, I don't, I don't really know. I just keep building layers until I feel I've reached the point that I'm done, and I don't try and target a certain amount of layers in any one area. If you were to look across the painting, there's some areas that have many, many layers, and other areas that don't have anything beyond the initial wash that I put down. So it's going to vary. You just have to do enough to get the values and colors and textures and everything working the way you want. And it's important when you're building up layers like this, if you want nice clean washes, you make sure you let your paper dry in between if you're going to be glazing. Uh, and in many instances, these colors here would be considered mud because they're leaning towards neutral but they only get muddy if you don't control the moisture in your paper and aren't strategic on when you place them on your painting. This is an instance where I've decided that I need to put another layer because I, I put a glaze over this area to, to push it back a little bit earlier, but after the brushwork that I've done, it's really not dark enough, so I'm going to come back over it with another uh, wash and glaze over this area. And I'll diffuse that color a little bit uh, with some water, soften that, and then I'll take my spray bottle and soften it a little bit more and diffuse that a little bit more just to push that area back a little bit farther. There are times when you place a value early in your painting process and then after you've worked through your composition and put many more values down, the area that you thought was dark isn't near as dark as what you thought when compared to some of the areas you painted after that and then you just make adjustments. Now I'm going to put a white mat on this to block out the tape and the board. And there you have my painting, Primary Floral. I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching.